In this session, we are going to look at how to create a bare repository. You can find the steps mentioned on the screen. So all these steps we are going to perform today on my local machine, on my local system. For this stuff, we don't require any cloud-based service provider like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. We are going to do everything on our local machine. So let's start. Over here, I have opened two command line subject terminals. The left terminal will be used for the bare repository related operations and terminal on the right side will be used for the non bare repository related operations. Now let us create a bare repository first and you can see that at present the folders are empty. There is nothing over here. So the command is git ini dash dash bare bare dot git. Now, as per the convention, we are providing this dot git as this suffix in the name, but it is not required. Okay, so you can see the message that uh, initialized empty git repository at that particular location. So over here, you can see that we have got this bare dot git which is a bare repository. So I will click into this and before we move forward, I will create a non bare repository from this bare repository. So I will again go to the terminal and over here, I will execute the command git clone bare dot git. So using this option, I am able to get a non bare git repository. Okay, uh, this is a warning. You appear to have cloned an empty repository. That's fine. But over here, you can see that we have two repositories or folders bare.git which is the bare repository and only bare which is a non bare repository so i will click into this and if you have seen my earlier video on a bare repository you can see that the content of this bare repository has been transferred to this dot git hidden folder of a non bare repository right now bare repository is a empty repository it does not contain anything so if you see over here we do not have anything in this refs page but you will observe one difference in the config file so over here if i open this config file of bare repository it will look something like this and if i open the config file of non bare repository it will look something like this so it will have information like from which location from which url it needs to push pull and fetch the relative information and as i have mentioned in my earlier video that when you clone a bare repository without any keywords in clone command it will become a non bare repository in which the content of bare repository will be transferred to the dot git hidden folder of non bare repository on left we have bare repository so i will go into that bare dot git and over here we do we have non bare repository i will go into that definitely if you want to get another copy of bare repository for that the command is git clone dash dash bare and remote repo url now at present we do not have anything in either of the folders okay both of the folders are blank especially wraps folder is blank it does not contain anything so what i will do is i will create a new text document over here temp text and we'll add some details over here like hello world i will save it and close it now i will go to the terminals and from non bare repository i will execute this command git status and you can see that the default branch is master branch no commits yet and it is the untracked file so what i will do is git add temp text dot txt then git commit over here i will provide the commit message like init initial commit then uh it present git fetch git rebase won't work because this is the new setup new files hence i will directly use the command git push and you can see that it has pushed that particular file into the git okay now if i go to that folders again you will see that first thing over here sorry uh, over here in git that we have got this logs folder which was not present earlier as well as we have got this index file as well 
which was not present earlier second is uh, in this refs in this heads you will get this master file which will provide the commit id or hash id over here like this same way if i go to this bear repository over here as well you will get this master file which will provide the same information of non bear dot git refs heads master file so both have identical information next what i will do is at present uh, if we say git status so everything is up to date now if i say git branch it's at the master branch only now what i will do is i will say git checkout dash b that stands for new branch and i will say dev after switch to the dev branch i will go to this uh, non bare repository over here and i will change this text file hello world this is a sample file to check bare versus non bare repository i will save it and close it again let me clear this stuff yeah and again i will say git status so you can see that on branch dev it says that it has been modified so what i will do is git add dash u untracked because it has already been added to this git tracking mechanism so this time i need to use this git add u then git commit commit message second commit then git fetch ribs again won't work over here because we are planning to push the changes to the new branch which was not earlier there so git push dash u stands for upstream origin and dev and you can see that the changes has been pushed to this new branch called dev so again i will go to over here and you can see that in bare repository we have got dev file which stands for development branch and again it contains the commit id or hash id of that particular branch same information will be available in this non bare repository in this no dot git hidden folder refs heads dev and master so both will contain same information now over here in the terminal if i say git branch dash a it will provide me the list of all the branches available over here okay and if i want i can just do like git checkout master git pool and all this stuff this was the basic setup on your local system for how to set up a local git server or a local git repository which will be working as a central repository for the coordination between different users different software developers or programmers and this method is uh, useful when you have small team setup or if you want to explore more about the git apart from it in case if you want to set up this entire git on some self hosted server or any other server in that case we need to follow few more steps that we will see in coming few sessions but for today that's it thank you for watching this video